President Joe Biden spoke at a DNC fundraiser, and he basically warned everyone that things are going to get very bad in this country because of the Supreme Court and how relentless they will be in going after our rights. And he says, mark my words, marriage equality is on the chopping block. Let's look at what he said specifically. CNN reports, it's not just the brutality of taking away a woman's right to her body, but it also, if you read the opinion, basically says there's no such thing as the right to privacy. If that holds, mark my words, they are going to go after the Supreme Court decision on same-sex marriage, said Biden, speaking at a Democratic National Committee fundraiser in Chicago, according to Pull Reports. The court, he said, would do the same for Griswold v. Connecticut, the 1965 ruling in which the Supreme Court said the Constitution protects the right to marital privacy privacy against state restrictions on contraception. The high court's decision on abortion, Biden suggested, could generate some enthusiasm at the ballot box in November and help Democrats pick up seats in the Senate and House. But the president acknowledged troubling economic news that has put his administration on the defensive in recent days. We can't let this happen, guys. And it's going to be hard because inflation is going to scare the living hell out of everybody, Biden said. All right, so there's a lot to unpack there. First and foremost, he's absolutely correct on the substance. The Supreme Court court will target all of our rights and that really makes for a horrifying situation because this country and all of its institutions will continue to hemorrhage legitimacy and when that happens we see the breakdown of democracy the breakdown of the regime itself so if we get all of these rights taken away from us that generations before me and my generation has fought for decades to win I mean, think about what that does. Think about what that tells us about this country. And even if we fight and win these rights back, it tells us that nothing is sacred. It's going to be a constant battle, even in the future, and anything is possible. Social security can be taken away from us. Medicare can be taken away from us. There's a current plot to privatize it that Trump started and Biden is continuing currently. We can win Medicare for all one day and then the Supreme Court or, you know, these rogue Republicans, they can take it away from us in some way, shape or form. So anything that we fight to accomplish can be taken away from us like that. And that does not make for a healthy system. That does not make for long lasting institutions. It signals the breakdown of not just democracy, but society itself. So it's it's horrifying to think about this and think about what the Supreme Court is going to do to this country. But when it comes to Joe Biden, the president of the United States, who currently holds power, saying this, you can't just tell us that bad things are going to happen to us and then not commit to fight for us. You can't just say, hey, it's going to get bad. Wish I could do something about it, but uh, vote harder because he's admitting here, look, we want to expand the uh, majority that we have, even though it's not really a majority because you have Kirsten Sinema and uh, Joe Manchin, who are effectively Republicans. But he knows because of inflation, you know, Republicans will try to run on that and they'll try to deflect and make the election not about abortion or issues that voters care about. But I mean, as president, he's admitting that, look, the window where we have power is closing and it's going to get bad. So, man, I'm crossing my fingers and I hope that the election turns out my way. I mean, he's not saying this, obviously, but that's the implication. And you can't you can't do that. If you actually know what's at stake and you are acknowledging how bad it's going to get, now that you're in power, use this opportunity today, not tomorrow, not the next day, not a month from now, not after November, but today to do absolutely everything in your power to prevent that from happening. You can't just tell us it's going to get bad and then say nothing else after that. There has to be a but. It's going to get bad, but as president of the United States right now, I'm going to do everything in my power to not just stop the Supreme Court and Republicans from taking away your rights, but I'm going to make sure that we win this election. So I'm going to start by doing things that improve the lives of the American people. Now, the question is, how does he get anything done if you have people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema in your own party sabotaging your agenda? Well, he can do a lot with his pen, he could take executive action unilaterally, and it would make a gigantic difference. So the first and most important thing that he needs to do is galvanize young people because they usually are make or break for every single election. So what can he do to get out young people? We all know he can cancel student debt. 
As Truthout explains, a recent Morning Consult poll found Biden's extended pause on federal student loan interest and payments is popular, but that the president could reap rewards by going even further. According to another poll, nearly half of voters in the battleground states of Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin would be either somewhat more likely or much more likely to vote in November if President Biden canceled $10,000 in student loan debt. That likelihood of voting increases by 11 points when asked if all student loan debt should be canceled. So let's just pause right there. An 11 point jump would be massive. That could actually change this entire election. It could turn it around for Democrats, but he's not going to do that. He said he's not even going to cancel 50,000. So canceling all of it is out of the question, apparently. So think about how how insufferable it is. Uh, He's admitting to us that he has the authority to cancel student loans, but he's just going to cancel 10,000. He knows that you want him to cancel all of it. He knows that there's going to be political benefits to canceling all of it, but he's choosing to not do that. Does that sound like a president who actually wants to hold on to this majority or expand it? But there's more that he can do. So two thirds of Americans want cannabis legalized for recreational purposes under federal law. Biden can remove cannabis from schedule one with executive action. And then he can call on Congress to put a bill on his desk to make it legal in all 50 states. If you can do that, like if you did that, can you imagine how motivated people would be in all of these states? Not just young people, older people as well. Like, can you imagine they think, wow, I want to vote for him because he's going to do something that is incredible. He already, you know, showed us that he's serious about this by descheduling cannabis. So, I mean, if he's serious and he just needs more senators who will go along with this, then sure, I'm going to vote for Democrats. Like, this is not, like, just to be clear, it's not a guarantee that all of these strategies will work. But if you actually believe that your majority is in danger, then you have to do everything in your power to deliver. And Let's be very clear. You shouldn't be doing this just because your majority is in danger. You should doing these good. You should be doing these things to benefit the American people because it's just morally right. It's objectively good. Delivering for the people is what you should be doing as a public servant. But still, if you want to do it for political reasons, I don't care. What I care about is you do it. And that could save this election. It could turn it around, but he's not going to do it. But let's assume for a second that he did do this. He did everything in his power. And, you know, it still looked as if he's going to lose this election. Well, do you just tell us that bad things are going to happen and then you do nothing about it? No. You say, look, as president of the United States, I'm not going to stand idly by and watch your rights be taken away from you. We saw what they did with bro. So we know what's going to happen with marriage equality and contraception. So here's what I'm saying. I want a bill on my desk right now so we can codify marriage equality into law before it's too late. And also let's sign the Equality Act into law because that's something that I promised I would do right when I was elected and I never fulfilled that promise. Now, that's probably gonna fail too, but explain it to the American people. Listen, we didn't have the votes, but I tried. I spoke with Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. I threatened them. I tried to, uh, you know, bring them on board with my agenda using carrots. That didn't work. I tried sticks, so it failed. But I'm still not going to give up. Now, we're going to hold rallies across the country to galvanize the American people because we all agree that marriage equality should remain the law of the land. So all of us can agree that the Supreme Court should absolutely not impose their theocratic views on all of us. So let's hold rallies across the country and make sure that the momentum for this issue doesn't die, that we put pressure on these uh, saboteurs in my party who are stopping us from codifying Obergfell v. Hodges. There is nothing stopping him from doing these things. Trump held rallies when he was still president, and that kept the base consistently engaged. It's probably one of the most, you know, um, savvy political things that Trump did. But we don't see that from Biden. Even if you fight and you fail, that still does wonders because it shows us that you have it in you to fight. But currently in the White House, there's just no sign of life there. There's nothing. Biden's just saying, hey, they're going to take away more of your rights. Good luck. You can't say that to us when you're the president and you have power right now. Again, it's not like they have a real majority with Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. But you've given up on issue after issue. You couldn't even pass voting rights, which is the bare minimum thing that you can do to maintain this democracy that puts weight behind the words vote when you tell constituents to vote time and again whenever they're frustrated with what's happening in this country. So 
I feel like I shouldn't have to give the president of the United States a fucking pep talk on every episode. You ran for this job. You wanted the job. Now fight. Don't just tell us it's going to get bad. Fight. And if you lose, at least we know that you tried. But I don't even see you trying. I don't even see a spark there. Show us that you're willing to fight and people will reward you for that. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. You know You 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 know You know the you know the thing. You're getting nervous, man. man.